very good evening everybody so dear friends meeting again with the organon session we are discussing regarding the intermittent diseases since last three four lectures and we have finished the types of intermittent diseases animan started explaining about intermittent diseases by explaining the two important types the first variety which he has explained is the alternating diseases a type of chronic diseases where one disease state alternates at a certain period with another disease state and vice versa and he explains it is the product of sora sometimes it might be a product of syphilis also and accordingly antisoric remedy or antisyphilitic remedy depending upon the situation which you have to use when we are dealing in modern era we can get a sorosyphilitic remedy which covers the whole paroxysm and we can treat with the help of that remedy also the second variety of intermittent disease which he has explained is the typical intermittent diseases the typical intermittent diseases where one disease state remains for certain period fixed period and thereafter it disappears and again after a fixed period it reappears and in between period the patient remains to be in state of health and this is the typical intermittent diseases again he has divided it into two types the non febrile variety and febrile variety non febrile while explaining the non febrile variety he explains over there that these are the diseases which are caused because of the again because of mainly the soric miasm but many a times the syphilis alternates with it and you have to treat them with the antisoric or antisyphilitic or alternating antisora with antisoric with antisyphilitic remedy and one more hint which he has explained over there in that while treating non febrile variety many a times to remove the periodicity of the disorder the potentized dose of cinchona bark is needed in such types of cases then he started explaining about the febrile variety which is called as intermittent fevers yesterday we have discussed about intermittent fevers according to the modern science the intermittent fevers is only a, in general the common ache or a malaria and they considers the disease only in chill heat and sweat stage that's all nothing more than that and that line of treatment was only persistent during hanuman and time was the quinine derivatives even last few years back quinine was the only derivative which was useful for in, uh, to treat the intermittent fevers nowadays there are few more molecules but these intermittent fevers when we look from the homeopathic point of view hanuman hanuman again ex, um, categorize them into different variety there are many permutations and combinations out of which he explains that the soric uh, the sporadic and epidemic varieties of intermittent fevers when present you have to take into consideration whether they are showing the two stages or three stages if there are two stages that is chill followed by heat or heat followed by chill or sometimes heat followed by sweating or sweating followed by chill or many permutations and combinations of these two states which happens to be there and every state is a different variety of the febrile no, intermittent fever many a times it might be a, of a three stages consisting so it is chill followed by heat followed by sweat sometimes sweat followed by chill followed by heat or many permutations and combination of the, all three stages and when we deal homeopathically with, with such types of diseases we have to give so much of importance to those specific states those states gives you exactly the remedy because in repertory we have three different chapters on this the chill the heat or fever and perspiration second important hint which he has mentioned over there while dealing with these cases the symptoms which are present during the interval that is the not during the attack of a fever but in between when patient remains in state of health and the symptoms which are persistent during that state plays a very vital role in order to find it out a similimum in such types of cases and that's what we have discussed in yesterday's lecture 
So a remedy can be found it out with two ways. First, the stages which you have to take into consideration. At the same time, you have to take into consideration the symptoms which are persistent during the interval or during the healthy state and those on the basis of which you can find it out a right remedy for the case. So this is what we have learned up till now, including the footnotes also we have discussed where he has mentioned various permutations and combinations of those intermittent fevers and that's what we have discussed. We have finished up to the algorithm number 235. Today we are going to learn 236 and 237 where he explains when to give the dose to the patient. It is too important while dealing with the intermittent fevers, exact timing when one should introduce the remedy that is more important. And that's why what he says over there, aphorism 236. The most appropriate and efficacious time for administering the medicine in, the, in these cases is immediately or very soon after the termination of the paroxysm, as soon as the patient has in some degree recovered from its effects. It has then time to effect all changes in the organism requisite for restoration of health without any great disturbance or violent commotion. Commotion when the show of Whereas the action of medicine, be it ever so specifically appropriate, if given immediately before the paroxysm, coincides with the natural recurrence of the disease and causes such a reaction in the organism, such a violent contention contention manje vada tamudda bhandan that an attack of the of that nature produces at the very least the great loss of strength if it do not endanger the life see very important thing and very important hint he has mentioned when to administer when you and he explains over there Whenever the patient comes to you of an intermittent fever, when his perspiration stage is finished, just finished, immediately after that, one should introduce the remedy. Because in between state, he used to remain in state of health, where there are very less chances that patient might get an aggravation. And patient, during that period, the recovery and the recovery period becomes good and patient gets a boost to his energy and patient recovers very quiet. If by chance, if you have given the remedy at the start of the paroxysm, that is during the chill stage, the dose stimulates the vital processes. Already the disease process has started beginning. The natural fever spike is coming up and you have stimulated it. What happens? The fever spike which used to happen up to this level goes up and may endanger the life. And that's why it is too much necessary to understand exactly when to give the remedy in intermittent periods. This, parag this paragraph is very, very essential from the practical point of view. So if you are treating any case of the malarial fever, dengue fever, um, rickets cell fever, where intermittent, these are different types of intermittent fever. In such types of cases, when to administer remedy plays a very vital role. And the hint or um, practical point, which Hanuman have mentioned regarding it, it is the time when the perspiration stage just abated and patient enters into the state of health in between. During that period, one should give a remedy. So that is the first thing which he has mentioned. What he further says, but if the medicine be given immediately after the termination of the field, if you give as Hanuman have mentioned, that is to say, at the period when the apyrectic interval has commenced and a long time before there, before there are any preparations for the next pair of them, then the vital force of the organism is in the best possible condition to allow itself to be quietly altered by the remedy and thus restored to the healthy state. So this is the time when you have given when you have given the remedy. That is the declining phase of the 
way pure paroxysm just the perspiration has started abating or it has just stopped and patient enters into the pyretic state and if you have choosed a very perfect remedy for example you have choose the natromir for the patient a chronic malaria and you have very typical natromir presentation and if you you, have, you would have given natromir to the patient you must give it in this period that is when there is no attack of the fever or when it is not just starting of the disease but ending of that paralysis and when you have given that treatment then vital force is in a good condition to take over the stimulus by, given by the medicine and to produce a vital energy the vital energy which is disturbed again regains the strength and then it has a capacity to fight against own disease so most appropriate time to give the remedy during the intermittent fevers is just when the perspiration starts stops or it starts abating or when just a inter interval starts a pyretic state starts it is the high time to give the medicine and wait what happens later then he explains one more thing in this paragraph sometimes it happens that person's disease is quotidian means it happens daily you don't have a lot of time in between then what one should do that also he has mentioned or sometimes it is so fast that you know, after one attack another attack comes very early in between interval is very short if it is so what should one should do that also hanuman explained see how much um, th- how much thought was there in his mind to consider each and everything and give the hints to the students so that they will not get the problem so aphorism 237 what he says over there i think there is one footnote footnote number 130 that will read first and then we'll enter into 237 uh, that footnote is when if you by chance given medicine early in the chill state what happened this is observed in fatal cases by means by no means rare in which the moderate dose of opium given during the cold stage quickly deprived the patients of life so he explains that if you would have given the medicine at a wrong time that is at during the chill stage you have given the opium and what happened there might be a chances that patient goes or lands into complication and patient may land into the death also so such types of dangerous complications can happen if you don't know exactly when to give the medicine so when you deal with the intermittent fevers keep it in your mind that you should give the medicine just when the perspiration starts abating and patient enters into the state of in between maybe so that is first thing which he explains over there and then if the interval is less then what one should do aphorism 237 but if the stage of apyrexia be very short as happens in sometimes of bad some very bad fever or if it be disturbed by some of the after suffering of the previous paroxysm the dose of homeopathic medicine should be administered when the perspiration begins to abate or other subsequent phenomenon of expiring paroxysm begins to begin so see we what he explains if in between interval is very less the state state of apyrexia is very less then you should not wait that apyrexia will come when you find it out that perspiration stage is declining it is the time you must give the remedy so so that there will be no further aggravation and you you will get a time your remedy will get a time to adjust with the situation and boost the energy in the patient so right time for administration of the remedy which he mentioned exactly in this in those two paragraphs to aphorism number 236 and 237 and then one more aphorism we will finish one more aphorism because today we will have time so we'll finish one more 238 also aphorism 
not infrequently the suitable medicine has with a single dose destroyed several attacks and brought about the return of health but in majority of cases another dose must be administered after each attack <clears throat> so if you have given the remedy at a right time many a times it happens that single dose is sufficient there will be no further recurrence there will be no further attack but sometimes it happens that there will be again a recurrence of the further attack. Then when to repeat? What he says? Every, every, after every attack, you should give a, another dose. Better still, however, when the character of the symptom has not changed, doses of same medicine given according to the new discovery of repetition of doses. See the note to the aphorism number 270. May be given without difficulty by dynamizing each successive dose with the 10 to 12 succussions of the vial containing the medicinal substance. Nevertheless, there are at times cases, though seldom, where the intermittent fever returns after several days well being. This return of the same fever after a healthy interval is only possible when the noxious principle that first caused the fever is still acting upon the convulsant. Convulsant means just dukhnya tun nuktaj bara dalega. Convulsant period. As is the case in marshy regions. Here, a permanent restoration can often take place only by getting away from this causative factor as is possible by seeking a mountainous retreat. If the cause was a marshy people. So what he says over there, there are two ways. Already he is explaining the variety of uh, the epidemic and sporadic variety of intermittent fever. And he has mentioned that you have to give the remedy, not the antisori. The remedy which is according to the stage. So according to the state and stage, you have to find it out a right remedy. And it should be given when perspiration starts acting or when the healthy starts healthy. When the health starts, um, healthy state, patient enters in between healthy state. And you have given a right remedy to the patient. In such types of cases, no further attack can be possible. And if it recurs, you have to go give another dose after every attack. And every time, you must go on increasing the... Every time you go on increasing the potency in a successive way. Hanuman in this sixth edition, he has mentioned two ways of treating patient. You must make a liquid potency. And with liquid doses, every time you go on increasing the potency. You go on increasing gradually the potency and There is a disturbance. Please, please. So you go on increasing potency every time by a single potency. If you have given LM, if you have started with LM, if you have given LM1, LM2, LM3, gradually go on increasing. Or Or, if you have given the 30th potency of any medicine, you ask the patient to make a solution of it. Take one dose of previous solution, one TSL. Add uh, 10 or uh, 10 teaspoonful of water over there in that. Succus it every time with 100 succussions. Take the next dose. And every time, go on increasing the potency in such a manner. This is what Hanuman said. This is called as a plusing technique. And plusing technique is also good, but not a convenient mode of prescribing the remedy. It is not convenient for from the patient's point of view. Because it is difficult to understand how to prepare the dose and how to take the dose. So it is always better you repeat it in... Uh, LM potency and every uh, after every attack you go on increasing the potency by one dose. That will be a better solution for this. 
and this is what he has mentioned. And one more thing which he explained over there. If such a patient after long interval has again developed the disease. In between he was healthy. For one month he is healthy and after one month he again suffers from the similar type of attack. What Hanuman says? It means that the causative organism or causative factor is still working with you. It is because because he is residing in marshy area where such intermittent fevers remains as an endemic. And if it is so, then your thought should be different. Then he explained that it is a time to take that patient away from that marshy area. Take that patient away from the endemic area. Treat that patient over there. And when he becomes healthy, then he is boosted up so that he can enter in that place without any recurrence over there. So it varies when you deal with the endemic or um, intermittent fever or um, uh, intermittent fever persistent in a marshy area, here the line of treatment varies. So approaches are very clear with animal in mind. And he was very clear how to approach and how to go ahead with each variety of intermittent disease. And this is what he has explained over there. So how to manage intermittent fevers? when it is the right time to give the medicine, when it will not cause the aggravation. And second important thing, if it is endemic variety or uh, intermittent variety in marshy area where recurrence is quite common, how to treat that patient by taking him away from that specific area, treat him with the similar management and then he is in a state so that he can enter into that area without any subject. So that's, we have today finished three aphorisms, aphorism 236, 237 and 238. Tomorrow we'll continue with the 239. So many aspects I have touched while treating with those um, intermittent diseases. And these are very essential points which he has mentioned regarding the uh, management of intermittent fevers. We'll continue with it and we'll finish it as early as possible. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. And if any queries are there, we'll have a chat. Otherwise, we'll conclude. And second thing that yesterday I have mentioned that uh, there will be a thirst in divine school of homeopathy. The Thursday feast will be there. But instead of Thursday, it will be on Friday, not on Thursday, because there is some appointment is there with me. So instead of Thursday, we'll meet on Friday for divine school session or a minute source. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you being there. We'll meet tomorrow and we'll continue with our sessions of organ. Thanks a lot. Hello, sir. Han. Hello, sir. Bo there is one query, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, is placing technique and water dose are same or different? Plusing technique and water dose. Just a water dose is different. Plusing technique means you have to prepare every time an next potency out of that water dose. So the way you prepare the potencies in the similar manner, you have to take one part of the previous uh, water potency, um, add 99 part of water over there and give 100 succussions if you are preparing the centesimal. Uh, again, take a one step of that. In this manner, you have to go ahead. That is called as a pressing technique. So if you, if you are started with 30, you can give 31, 32, 33, 34. This is what is called as a pressing technique. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. There was a question by Nikita. Sir, please share the tips for acute fever management. Yes, we'll discuss after completing this intermittent fever session. We'll definitely discuss regarding it. Just remind me when we'll finish this. This Just remind me then we'll have a chance to discuss the tips for managing the acute fevers. Definitely. Okay. Thank you.